Hi, I'm going to show you the introduction to R, which is a session of this course, introduction to these four programming languages, given by these three centers for the day R, which is here. The goal of this session, to get a first overview of the R programming language, get an overview of what the course is about, and I'll be telling about the tarball with exercises, whatever that is. So the course has these learning objectives. We're going to use the module system, whatever that is, to load R. We're going to use it too to load even more R packages than you already get when you load R. Uh, we're going to find out which versions of R and R packages are installed. We're going to run some R scripts. We're going to write a batch script for running R. We're going to install R packages from CRAN. We're going to see how you can install your own R packages. We're going to start batch jobs if you want to do harder calculations. And we're going to run R Studio, which is a programming environment for R. And we do this for these three centers. What we don't do in this course is to improve your R coding skills. And what we don't do in this course is um, we're going to show you how to use R in even more HPC clusters. So these are the course goals. Let's talk about R um, to get into the mood of what the course will be about. So R is a programming language um, and it is an interpreted programming language. This means that there's a program that converts whatever you type in it, whatever text it gets, it converts it to machine code and then runs it. And this is done by the R interpreter, like the, the command line tool that where you can type stuff in and it will say stuff back. Like that's R at its basics. Like if you do software development in R, then you can use the R interpreter to run your R code. But you can also use R Studio, which is a visual programming environment uh, that gives more info than just the R interpreter. R uses R packages and this is code that is written by someone else usually um, that is reusable and well written by someone else so you don't need to write it yourself. There are multiple places where you can find R packages written by others. Um, the main source for R packages is CRAN but there are other pa um, R package repositories too. The main R resources are well the R homepage, the official R documentation and the CRAN homepage where they maintain all those packages. And R is used in many nice centers, so uh, Swedish um, H high performance computing centers. Um, and here is a link to those that use it on their clusters and have documented it and courses being taught all over Sweden. Right, so it's a it's a well used programming language or and appreciated on Swedish HPC clusters. So let's take a look at the schedule. Um, so here is a picture. I'll walk you through it, and below is the the schedule and time. So like the earlier sessions will be to to log in. You've already done that. Um, there are multiple ways to log in, and you have already been able to do so in one or another way. If you've logged in, well, then you can start do stuff. Um, you can run your batch jobs. You can like send hard calculations to the job scheduler. But that's like session three. That's what the number means. But you can also run an interactive session. So if you want to do really hard stuff on the uh, want to do really hard stuff, you don't do it on a login note. You you use a so-called interactive session so that others are not harmed by your hard calculations. Um, and that's session five. This is a simultaneous session where we each uh, each center has a slight difference there. So that's why we'll split up. So the R programming languages is an interpreted language done by the R interpreter, and it's loaded by a so-called R module. And this is what we'll be doing in the first hour. Um, the R language uses R packages. We discuss those in the second hour and it uses virtual environments to work with sets of R packages independently. That's the second hour. We'll also discuss parallel multi-threaded functions. We'll discuss machine learning, 
but also software development using RStudio. And to use R packages, um, we will have to use an R packages module that is differs per HPC center. And to use RStudio, you also need to use a software module. For RStudio, this also differs per HPC center. How this looks like in time is like this. Um, this is the optional login center. You've already done that, so we can assume you can log in in one of the three ways to your favorite HPC center. Then me is now introducing this, and I'll be dis uh, and discuss the syllabus. That's what I'm doing now. After this, we're gonna load some modules and run R. There will be a break of 15 minutes after we'll discuss the R packages and modules to load R packages, and then we're gonna use isolated environments so we can run multiple sets of packages independently. There'll be a lunch here, and at one o'clock we'll learn about batch jobs. That's when we can send hard calculations to our clusters, uh, so they can do it for us, and um, not on the login node where we should do any light things. At 1.30 there will be a session about parallel computing, after which there'll be a break, and then we split up for a simultaneous session in which we'll be discussing our studio. After another break, we'll discuss machine learning, after which there'll be a summary and evaluation. The last part of this session is the exercises used in this course. So the exercises used in this course are compressed in a so-called tarball, which is some kind of a zip file. Um, and you'll be using it in the later sessions. And I'll, I'll, I'll click on the session soon, how to get and decompress it. In the session load modules and run session, there is the time to also get it and decompress it. Alright, so this concludes the session, um, more or less, except for me showing how to get that tarball and uncompress it. So you can also, so I just click the link, but you can also find it in the course main menu under the common session. Alright, there are two steps. So a tarball is a file that contains multiple files, similar to a zip file. To use the files it contains, it needs to be untarred or unzipped or uncompressed, whatever you call it, first. There are two steps, you need to get the tarball and then you need to uncompress it. Um, and to do so in a terminal, you have to do that. So I'm going to show this. So I'll be using a terminal, um, login to RACAM, um, SSH reshell at RACAM.upmax.uu.se. Um, but whatever cluster you're going to use is okay. If you use a remote desktop environment, you start a terminal and then you, have, you are here too. I copy paste this thing there. And now it has downloaded it. We see this number dot one appear because I already downloaded it. Um, but we got it on our computer and here you need to uncompress it. I just copy paste that line. And now it has extracted all the files on my computer. So if I, for example, now want to see this exercise, add to whatever that is, I can, for example, show how it looks like. Uh, I can even run our script already on it to make it run um, and to make it work. Yeah, I know this is the answer. All right, so that concludes how to get the tarball and uncompress it. This ends this session on the introduction of R. Um, with that, I wish you a very enjoyable course day. Bye.